Welcome to our class tutorial on rate, sorry, ratio, rate, and proportion. Now, we've been dealing with these three things a lot this semester. We've been using it in a lot of different ways. Uh, we've been using it for probabilities, predictions, samples, uh, comparing prices, comparing cost per unit, making financial decisions, and for all these things, you're using the same basic ideas and the same basic math. So we're going to be going over this in two parts. This first part is what a ratio and a rate and proportion are and how they're used. The second part is going to be their applications in specific questions and how to extract the right information out of those questions. Well, just a moment. So to begin with the ratio, say we said the Canucks win 7 out of 9 games. Obviously that sentence is comparing two different numbers. Now those two numbers are, when we compare them mathematically, we compare them using division. So it compares them as a fraction of A over B. So if we say that A is equal to 7, our number of wins, B is equal to 9, the number of games, we end up with a fraction of 7 over 9. Now, this is the way that we will almost always look at a ratio initially, is as a fraction. But there are more than one way, there is more than one way to express a ratio. So, as I said, it can be expressed as a fraction, A over B, so in our previous example, we had 7 over 9. It can also be expressed using a colon to separate the numbers. So we would have 7 to 9. And it can also be converted to a decimal by division. Remember, divide is the same thing as this symbol. All right? It's the same thing. So 7 over 9 also means 7 divided by 9. And if we go 7 divided by 9, I'll switch to my calculator. 7 divided by 9. Notice even on the computer calculator it uses that symbol. And it's 0 0.777 repeating. So 0 0.77 repeating. So the next important thing to remember whenever you're dealing with ratios is you want to reduce them down. You want to keep them in the lowest terms. Now lowest terms is when you can no longer have a number that can divide evenly into both the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator, which is the bottom number. So say for example we had 3 over 12. Well, is there anything that can divide into both 3 and 12? Well, 3 can divide into both. So 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. 12 divided by 3 gives us 4. So it's reduced to 1 over 4. Can that be reduced any more? Well, there's not really any number that can be divided into both of these. And always, when your numerator is equal to 1, you're pretty much guaranteed to be at lowest terms. So let's do another example. Let's say, oh, I don't know, 8 over 24. So 8 over 24, uh, first of all, we can divide both of these by 2. So we're going to divide the top and bottom by 2. And we're going to end up with 4 over 12. Now we can divide 2 into this again, or actually we can divide 4 into both of these. So 4 divided by 4 is going to give us 1. 12 divided by 4 will give us 3. So we end up with 1 third. So we could say 8 over 24 is the same as 1 third. Now, take a look at this equation. This is going to be really familiar in a few minutes because that is a proportion. It tells us that 2 
different ratios are equal. So, as I said, that's exactly what a proportion is. A proportion is an equation that indicates that two ratios are equal. So the example we just had on the previous screen, 8 over 24 is equal to 1 over 3. If a number is missing, it's a variable. So a variable, quite often you'll see n or x or a. This just means that it's going to be replaced by a number. Now, you also want it to be the right number. Now, to do that, there's a couple ways. We can either solve the equation using mental math, or we can use one of the cross-multiplication techniques that we're going to go over in a little bit.